Okay. That went a bit further right than normal, but that was a very high ball flight. And what is your biggest issue, Mel? Uh, well, yeah, I think uh, high ball flight, which just increases spin and, and stops it going far enough. Okay. So how have we addressed that in the past? What are the things we, that you, sorry, not we, what are the things that you've tried to do? Uh, I, think, I think the main problem I've got is that uh, once, I, once I get past the ball, my club face is still... Absolutely. Uh, we'll get back to that. What have you tried to do in terms of the technology to lower the ball flight? Oh, I've tried different shafts. There's a okay. full of them over there. You've tried different shafts. So Mel is the shaft man. Not many people have as many shafts as what Mel's got. The others are still at home. Uh, we've, got, we've got four different shafts here and there are more at home, as Mel just said. What difference did changing the shaft make? Uh, changed the colour of the shaft, but <laughs> other than that, not a heck of a lot. It didn't change the ball flight, no, did it? No, it didn't. Okay, so we've, ch we've fiddled with shafts. What else have we tried to do with the head to lower the ball flight? Well, the, uh, the first thing was uh, obviously get, get a lower head uh, driver. So um, normally I used to hit it around that sort of 10-ish mark. Yep. I'm down at nine at the moment. So you're de-lofting it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it would make sense that if you're hitting it too high, you de-loft the driver and that was going to lower the ball flight. What happened, Mel? Uh, it didn't particularly lower the ball flight, but it did, uh, the lower it goes, the harder it is to keep you know, side spin out, um, and also, uh, you know, just directionally, it's it's more difficult. The the straighter the face, the harder it is to yeah to keep it straight. And so. that's logical. You think I'm hitting it too high, I'll deal off the club, that'll make it go lower. Except in your case, that didn't happen. We changed the shafts. We went for a heavier shaft, stiffer shaft. That should make it go lower. Nothing happened. So the reason that that's happening is you're not releasing the club properly. You're not releasing your hands. You're actually coming through, if you just take your set up to that, to that T there, as you come through, your club is remaining square to the target for too long, which means your club is open to the path because the path of the, of the club is slightly this way. You're there. So we have a launch monitor that we've used in the past and traditionally, what is your face to path ratio? Uh, it's been anything up to about, uh, look, uh, open by about six to eight degrees. Six to eight degrees. And that's killing you. That's adding spin, it's adding loft. So that's why you're hitting it too high. So Correct. what we have to do is we've got to change what's happening between this point and this point. If we can get the club going from there through to there, that's gonna lower the ball flight because you're normally in here that's increasing the ball flight. Great. So I've got two things I want to do with you yep. to try and help that. The first thing is your grip is very, very tight through impact in your left hand. And you're starting out with it light, but as you come down into the hitting area, it's really tight. So your watch face is pointing over here, which is keeping the club face open. So the feeling I want you to have is imagine you've got a Frisbee in that left hand. How would you throw me the Frisbee right now? Good, it's turning over and your watch face is pointing over there. Is that a difficult move for you? Uh, well, not, not now or with no. a Frisbee. But with a <laughs> Frisbee, it's natural. It <laughs> How tight would you be holding the Frisbee? I think that's, uh, yeah, less, less tight. It's pretty than, relaxed, isn't it? Because you need to have that wrist yeah. action. Okay, so we've got the left hand throwing the Frisbee. Now with the right hand, of the five digits that are on that hand, which two are the strongest? Uh, these two. Those two. Yep. They are the ones that have to be used. And because of that, nothing's really being used in the right hand. So if we can get the thumb and the pointer to feel like it's a little tighter than anything else, and it's turning that club to the left, in combination with your left hand throwing the Frisbee, it's gonna lower the ball flight. That makes sense? Yes. Okay, so I wanna see two practice swings, left hand only on the club, hip height through to hip height, and feel like you're throwing the Frisbee. Yeah, a little bit slower than that. When we're doing this, we need to be slower to make it easier to implement. That's really good. See where that club face is post impact? Do that again. Club face is perfectly square to the ground, and look at the extension and the gap you've got between your hands and your body. When it's tight, you're in, you're in there, and it's really close, a bit chicken wingy. Okay, now swap hands. Get that right 
thumb and pointer finger. So every, every digit's on the club, yep. but you're going to feel it through that right thumb and pointer finger. Fantastic. Now you're in that nice wide position post impact. Okay, now we're going to give it a hit. Feeling those things. Okay, suddenly the ball flight lowered. Yeah, it was a little bit too low, but that didn't have as much curvature on it from left to right. So that wasn't ballooning up and stopping. Even though you've probably didn't carry that as far, that would have rolled a lot more, okay? How did that feel? Uh, yeah, I, I could certainly feel myself turning it over. Obviously, it was a bit uh, But it's only low, the first time you've done it. It's also, it was also uh, running at a driver at about eight and a half degrees, so. Oh, is, been... it, is that eight and a half degrees yes, now? at the moment, so. Oh, okay. So how about we get your little tool out? Let's add loft. Let's go the other way. I want you to add as much loft as we can. Ah, now that was a different ball flight. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. So that went half the height of the first one. Mm. It went a lot straighter, mm. but it actually almost tried to draw. So even if it didn't draw, the first one had a lot of side spin going left to right. So with the less side spin we have left to right, the more the ball is going to run when it lands. So that may still may have carried the same distance. It, I think it carried a little bit further, but when the ball ran, uh, landed, it was going to run. That's going to give you another 20 to 30 meters. All you're doing is releasing your hands better. Yeah, it certainly felt more solid off the uh, face. Yep. Um, and uh, I could certainly feel myself, you know, uh, looking to get that face turning over in that zone that we're talking about. Yeah, good. Okay, so there's a little additional thing we can do to help with your training. And I like the word training rather than practice. If I put this stick out here in front of you, is that stick to the right of your start line? Ah, uh, yes it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, so look, I could probably make that a bit tougher and I could put it here. So your job when you hit this is to feel like, okay, I've got to get the ball starting left of the stick. Simple thought, start it left of the stick and you're still thinking about your right hand releasing. That's a beautiful drive. That carried a little further in the air. It had a lot less side spin. It's probably 15 meters lower in, in, in total uh, flight time than the first one. Mm. That's definitely going further. A much better launch window. The problem is once you start keeping it open, you hit a really high launch window with that. that uh, yes, that, now uh, interestingly, what loft are you using? Uh, at the moment? At the moment. Right at the moment, it's 10 degrees. What was it two weeks ago? Uh, about eight and a half. Yeah, so we've actually added loft to make you hit it lower. And that seems a bit strange, but that's what we do sometimes. It's, I, if, I, if you could change that to 15 degrees, I would love you to start that at 15 and then just keep working on doing this to lower the ball flight. And if you can do that, it's gonna have a really good effect. Well, I think a, a good thing for, for me to think about is even though I had lower loft, I was hitting it twice as high, and now I've got higher loft, hitting it half as low. So strange game, isn't it? It is. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for uh, for coming and and doing this. I really look forward to seeing and hearing about what happens in coming weeks. Thanks, doctor. If you want to lower your score, I'm going to put a link to another video just up here that I know is going to help you to lower your score.